So, so what are the circumstances keeping North Korea as it is? Certainly there's external pressure for them to change their ways, open up, free their people. But I, I, my understanding is like China is very defensive. China likes North Korea as sort of like this problem that the rest of the world needs to come to China to uh. work. Uh, they're a, a crazy guy with the nukes and only we can negotiate. Yeah, huh? like if you have to talk to us and it actually ties a lot into um, sort of China's internal political struggles as well, because certain factions within China were the ones working with the Kim family. Mm-hmm. Other factions did not. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 leverage, leverage. for them. Yeah, yeah, it's leverage. And it's definitely makes China look better. Right. It, it really yeah. does. Yeah. 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 Well, like hearing a story where you say that, that that you felt being a slave in China was better because at least you had food. But the thing is, what shocks me is in America. Like these people are talking about slavery that happened hundreds of years ago. Right. This is happening right now when you're sitting down. Do you know during the COVID time, if you go to buy through the Chinese Google, you get North Korean girls for $900. You order them in. And this is happening... And nobody in mainstream, like Michelle Obama, has no problem standing up for girls that are captured by ISIS or Boko Haram. Where is any public figure in the mainstream standing up for these girls? Right now, there are 300,000 North Korean refugees in China hiding, and most of them are women, and most of them are trafficked. So we have actual modern day slaves existing. China has a huge human trafficking problem. Yeah. Because the one child policy screwed up. So 30 the population, million, yeah. 30, 30 million, million more million men. men cannot find wives. So where do these women being bought by these 30 million men who cannot afford the wives in China? Wow. Are there organizations that buy the women to then free them and, and get them to other countries? We, we do that. I work with a lot of nonprofits. We do rescue work. But it's became so hard during the COVID. Oh, yeah. So, but the thing is, it's, you know, now in America right now, there is only over 200 North Koreans made it to America for during the last 75 years. Yikes. Yeah. Well, for, for, for you to come from South Korea to the United States, was it difficult? I came as a South Korean. As, so, oh, so you just walked right in. Yeah, but then I had to get a visa. I, mean, I came legally. <laughs> Did, oh, all right. Like, yeah. as, a, as a South uh, Korean, mm. you can just fly here on, 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 like, without notice and get visa on entry, right? You get the electronic visa, but it's hard to get a working permit. Right, you can right. come as a tourist, but it's very hard to come as immigrate immigrant yeah. from South Korea. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's actually fairly difficult, uh, I think, for anybody to, mm. to, 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 to get a work visa in the United States. Yeah. I say ve- relatively difficult, but I'm sure there's a lot of countries with a lot harder, especially with like Middle Eastern refugees into Europe. I've seen a lot of those stories. Mm. Yeah, so... Japan is pretty closed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've heard people say that Japan is an ethno state, and I've heard other people say it's not. But I'm curious, you know, what you guys think about that. I'm, I'm not an expert on Japan. Mm-mm. Outside I'm... of anime. <laughs> 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 well, so... I guess the difficult thing is I'd like to try and predict the future. You know, mm-hmm. I'd like to know, can we can we take we, we've we've made some of these statements like, oh, we can see what happened in North Korea. We can see how people behave, how they're scared to speak. And then we, 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 we've said somehow North Korea became this way. But is it really like the U.S. could track in a similar direction or is it is it just fat, fanciful thinking that the U.S. would ever become like this? You know, are, is the U.S. going to break out of this and just become sane again and defeat the the cultural marxist ideology i'm fairly optimistic to be completely honest Mm -hmm. i mean i i I see these parents waking up i see a lot of uh, a lot of reason to be optimistic in terms of what's happening politically with people being snapped to attention because of what's happening and i have to imagine that there's elements within the u.s government they know everything we're saying and they're worried about these things too or is the ideological split so severe that these you know cultural marxists and critical race theorists control too much well, I think with everything happening in schools, that's that was definitely overreach. Like once you start targeting people's yeah. kids, mm-hmm. that's when people really freak out. That brings it to home. So I think this is like all the debate about critical race theory. I think it's really a, a good window of opportunity to educate people about what Marxist ideology is, how it functions, how it takes an issue and inverts it and then flips it into something else like for example race Mm. uh you know decades ago we as a country made a decision that you know judging people by the color of their skin is wrong that's Mm. racist and now it's it's flipped so it's like oh no no you should develop 
racial consciousness, I think is the term they use. You need to be able to look at people by race so you can properly sort them out based on their privilege and their oppressor status. That's creepy. It is. It's it's kind of the opposite of Taoism, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious about war. Um, we, we recently saw China send the most warships they've ever, war, warplanes, into the Taiwanese defense zone. And so there's this, obviously, one thing we mention often is Thucydides Trap. There's a very real fear that war will be happening soon. I'm wondering, before we start talking about China, though, the, the stuff that you see with North Korea with the firing of the nuclear missiles, mm -hmm. do you feel there's anything to that? Or is it just Kim Jong-un says, look at me, I'm a nuisance, give me free stuff, and there's not actually going to be any real conflict out of the nuclear weapons in North Korea? I think Kim Jong-un is very rational enough not to start a war with any country. He knows when he does that, he's going to be done, right? Um, America cannot get him. So I don't think that can ever happen. But it, it just I think Kim Jong-un's uh, goal is waiting for the West to be weakened, right? For the West to be destabilized right now. There's so much internal problem. America is so busy with themselves right now, not able to solve any problems like globally. Yeah. So it's a good thing for Kim Jong-un, right? He wants to weak America. And internally, he just keep building capability with the missiles. So someday, his dream might get, get that he might bomb America entirely. And, I mean, his, his bombs can reach Hawaii, D.C., I mean, yeah. but, you know, bombing few cities, not gonna, he's not going to win the war, right? He can attack, damage the USA, but not going to win. But when America is so busy, he just keep doing this, his thing. If if he were to try and fire a nuke or something, would would China China would stop them, right? Mm. Uh, China would be f probably forced in a position where it would have to at least offer some kind of lip service about like that's bad. Yeah. Because they don't want the rest of the world to turn against mm -hmm. China. Right. Because like if if you if you are a country backing North Korea nuking <laughs> some other country, that's that's bad PR. Yeah. Um, practically speaking, what they would do, I. China is worried about North Korea becoming a little too hot to handle, yeah. too unwilling to listen yeah. to Beijing leadership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as I recall, Kim Jong-un didn't even meet with Xi Jinping for many years until, until the Trump. Until, yeah, Trump was about to meet with him. And then yeah. suddenly, like, the two sides. But <laughs> it wasn't Kim Jong-un didn't want it. Xi Jinping didn't invite him. Do you know that Dang song the oh. uncle, mm -hmm. he was a Chinese guy. He was funded by China a lot, the uncle who got executed, right? Oh, yeah. So when Kim Jong-un killed his uncle, China got so upset because ah. they just did it independently. Mm. So Xi Jinping didn't invite him, didn't like accept him as a legitimate North Korean leader. But when he wants to meet Trump, of course, China had like jumped before. Yeah. Didn't, wasn't the brother that Kim Jong-un poisoned also like hiding in China? He was kind yeah. of being supported yeah. by well, China, China too. China has been trying to push like their own interest in North Korea by pushing people who would make the kind of market reforms yeah. they want. And supposedly Kim Jong-nam, I Kim think. Kim Jong-nam was, was open. Like he was open to that idea. And Zhang song Tech too. So yeah. China always recommended North Korea to take our path. Mm -hmm. Your Communist Party going to last forever. And it's like open up a little so people don't die from starvation, right? Like mm -hmm. what's the point of all this? And North Korea, like, no, 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 we're fine. So Kim jong un get rid of any reformers in the internal really? So, so, so mm -hmm. China wants North Korea to, to, to do better and adopt some more of their kind of policies? Exactly. They won, they, they toured Kim Jong-il the second Kim when he was alive, showed him around. Look at us, what we have done. Like, look at Shanghai, Beijing, like, two weeks tour, showing him, like, take the reform, like, path. And then Kim Jong-il goes back, nope, nope, we're not turning it down, right? This, this might be a dark question, but why hasn't anybody just removed that lineage and just gotten rid of that family? I mean, certainly there are people, you mentioned they're hiding out in China. Even China's got interest in this. Does no one want to? I mean, look, people have tried to r remove Castro, Saddam Hussein. The issue is China does not want a wave of North Korean refugees flooding yeah. into China. Interesting. They don't want to be responsible for North Korea because it's so terrible right now. Like, you have to rebuild the society from and they, scratch, right? And they can't let the U.S. take it. Yeah. Because if they don't, the U.S. Wa walks right in. And they don't want the U.S. on their border. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's their buffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So complicated and so horrifying because there are people here who need food and resources and just more importantly, opportunity. I mean, it sounds like if you got rid of the authoritarianism, these people would just thrive. Yeah. Do you know, like, North Koreans as a nation, 
one of the highest IQs in the world. Mm -hmm. So no wonder why they build these nukes. And you, North Korea is the only country can bully Biden, right? Biden's been trying to reach out to Kim Jong Un. Anytime, <laughs> anywhere, without putting any concessions, I want to meet you and talk to you. Kim Jong Un not return his call since wow. February. Yeah. But but Trump. <laughs> yeah, Trump was a tough guy. Kim Jong Un knew that he could not bully Trump. Mm -hmm. So whatever he was sending the love letters to Trump, <laughs> right? <laughs> Please him. And Biden, like Kim Jong Un, knows like I can bully you whatever way I want to. Well, I, I love it when Kim Jong Un called uh, uh, Trump a daughtered. You know. A you remember daughter? A daughtered. Oh, oh, daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like search the word. What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old <laughs> fumbling. Certainly that, that worked for Joe Biden. Yeah. But then Trump was like, I would never call him short and fat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was our president. So, but, but how do you feel about, you know, uh, I, I'll tell you this. There were a lot of people who are in this country don't like Trump. And like clockwork, they were all extremely critical of Trump for meeting with Kim Jong-un and cross and, and, and just meeting him with him in general. Mm -hmm. I looked at that. When Trump crossed the DMZ into mm -hmm. North Korea with no security, mm -hmm. I thought that was tremendous. Yeah. But what, what's, what's your thought? Back then, I was more like seeing it black and white. Like, you don't just sit down with the modern-day Hitler mm -hmm. and then treating him like a modern, like, actual leader of the country. Like, North Korean people didn't choose Kim Jong-un to represent us. He was a dictator, right? So the fact that Trump was going there without actually any concessions from, like, Kim Jong-un was al already lost. He didn't get anything back. Instead, Kim Jong Un did a huge promotion at home, showing like, "Look at me now! Even the America is backing me." Mm -hmm. So, yeah. if there's any internal coup that that would happen, they don't want to go after a guy that the U.S. is accepting as a legitimate leader. So internally, it was so bad. However, now, like in a way, Biden is worse, right? Like, I mean, Trump at least brought a highlight to the issue, and tried to solve something about it. Like Biden recently, they reviewed their policy towards North Korea which is going to be exactly what uh, Obama did. Strategic patience, which is uh, strategically you do not think, just waiting, and Kim Jong-un move the, take the first positive move. So they, if <laughs> they ignore North Korea like this, four, five years, I mean, eight years later, we don't know what North Korea end up with the nuclear like, capability. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I certainly see what you're saying with Trump. I was, uh, I was hopeful that, you know, Trump without security mm. crossed into North Korea and mm. they could have just snatched him up. They, they, he had, he had not, you know, obviously they, they wouldn't because there's you can't take the American president. But it felt like at least this was some normalization, some. Yeah. But but I certainly see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that it was a first step towards trust mm -hmm. and maybe some kind of normalized trade, maybe some kind of encouragement towards, you know, look, there's opportunity if you if you change some of the, your ways. But, you know, based on what what you've all been saying about how China wants the reform and they don't. Mm -hmm. It really does feel like the, this, the, the, the Kim Il family is a bunch of despotic, what's the, what's the megalomaniacs who think they're God? Yeah, they're so paranoid. And also the thing is, I mean, if we are negotiating with North Korea for the first time, it makes sense to honor them, make them feel comfortable and trusted. This guy has been playing the same playbook for like last 70 something years. They know what they know, or yeah. what they want to. So in a way, it just doesn't work anymore. Like talking to North Korea and then just try to make them warm and come out, it's not gonna work. It's gonna take way more than to change North Korea. When you, when you lived there, did you ever encounter South Korean propaganda? In North Korea? Yeah. I mean, every single day. Like I did not know South Korea was an independent country. They told us that US, US is a colonizing them. It's a modern day colonization. And then how these children get raped by US soldiers. And entirely like cartoons filled with the most corrupt and then how entire humanity want to come to North Korea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> entire humanity. There's a song in North Korea, Nothing to Envy. It's a song because we have nothing to envy. We live in the socialist paradise. You literally have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, when I interviewed these, these uh, New Zealanders who rode their motorcycles through New Zealand, I'm, I'm through North Korea, the one thing they did say was like, beautiful country, Un, untainted, nature, no, no, no pollution. There's no trash. No trash. No, but that's not true. You think so, right? You yeah. think so. <laughs> Look at just the, why North Korea is inter every year they have flooding, massive flooding. Mm. So we don't have as, as electricity. North Korea is very cold. We are like 80% mountains, like country. 
So people need to get us something to burn cooked food. We live in like 16th century time. We go to mm. river to bath. We n- I never seen a shower, like never seen a thing. We go to a few times a year, we go to river, we take a bath and that's it. So we have to get to chop the woods to fire, start a fire. So people go into the mountains and cut down an entire trees. And the big trees, China took it, China took it. And then the coal mine is, all, uh, China own North Korea now. They lent these like mines, coal mm-hmm. mines, gold mines for 100 years at least, 200 years at least. So they're digging, digging, digging pollution and the nuclear, the debris. They're doing so much test that now people in North Korea got deformed in their like phys- DNA changes. So, so much flooding. I mean, they're, I'm sure they go to the part where there are trees there. Yeah. But mo- when no more people live, we don't get the trees. We don't get nature. I'm so shocked when I was here today seeing all these trees like so many trees so pretty, yeah. oh you're in chicago now too yeah yeah i think a lot of people uh might not know this i didn't even re- i grew up in chicago when you fly in mm-hmm. chicago is like a forest yeah. because every city street has just a tree in front of every house yeah right. you go to new york and it's there's trees but it's a big <laughs> concrete block and, and la is the same way mm-hmm. yeah trees everywhere yeah that's that, that's a, that, that really is something truly amazing about chicago that i i, I should definitely give it credit for mm-hmm. i've been to a lot of cities but mm-hmm. to have Every city street with trees lining every house. It, it really is. It really is fantastic. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. the people that I interviewed, they said that they chose their route. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure it was just that it was an acceptable route in the first place. Of course. Because if they went through <laughs> bad areas, mm-hmm. it was interesting. He said, they told me that a lot of people criticize North Korea for their Potemkin villages. When, when someone comes in to interview, they bring them and they show them this wonderful supermarket and they say, mm-hmm. look at all of the glorious bounty. Mm-hmm. And we in the US, we say they're putting on a show to make it seem like they're successful. Mm-hmm. What this, uh, this New Zealander told me was, no, no, they're just dressing up. Like, like when you have your friends over, you wear your Sunday's best. You're not trying to lie to them. You're trying to be presentable, right? Hmm. That, that was their perspective on it. <sighs> My perspective is they're trying to trick you into thinking that people aren't suffering and dying in the streets. Soviet Union did that. Worked <laughs> yeah. on a lot of U.S. officials. Bernie who, Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who, who was good. it who said that it, uh, they, they, they came to the U.S. and said, if, the, if my people saw what, you know, uh, we've done to them? Because he was like at, a, at an, a supermarket. It was a Cuban guy. Was it a Cuban yeah, guy? Yeah, it was a Cuban guy who said, you know, he was at an Aldi. Right, so it's not even like it's nice not like at a Whole Foods. He's at an Aldi. Isn't that not an American chain? It's, it's actually German, is East it? German. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm. So, like, he was yeah, he was just saying like he was standing in an Aldi, and then he got too depressed and had to leave because he was like, they've destroyed our people. Like, yes. they've destroyed our country. Like, yeah. I thought there was a Russian guy who said that it, you know if if the pe- if my people saw the you know the, the variety or whatever. In, of, of the Americans, there would be a revolution overnight or something like oh, that. Yeah. That sounds familiar. I can't place it, though. Mm-hmm. I do think there's something silly about having, like, 80 different kinds of peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. But I suppose I'll take 80 kinds of peanut butter over no peanut butter at all. Yep. Hey, yeah. the market will decide. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all one kind of peanut butter. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Jong-un brand peanut butter. <laughs> different flavors. Here's one with the red label. Here's one with the yellow label. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the joke is that in... Um, in communist countries, you wait in a bread line. In capitalist countries, the bread line forms for you or something like that. Yeah. Mm. You know, the bread is in a line waiting for you, all yeah. just on the shelf and everything like that. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we have our problems, though. I think that if you go back to the early 1900s, the rise of the communist and the fascist factions in, 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 in Europe and, uh, you know, more so towards World War II, the communists get defeated in Europe by the fascists. The fascists get defeated by the Allies and the Soviet Union. But then communism begins to flourish, and thus we get the Cold War for several decades. I think one of the challenges we face is that individual liberty has weaknesses. We tolerate these authoritarians, these Mm -hmm. these communists, and they exploit. And so, sure, we had a Cold War. We won the Cold War, but I don't think the Cold War is actually over. Sure, the Soviet Union collapsed because their ideology doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Their plans make no sense. They have to kill people to support it. But so long as there are zealots who are willing to lie, cheat, and steal to get what they want, we we, we potentially walk the path towards that corruption as well. Mm -hmm. Certainly, you know, countries became the way they were. It's going to require everybody to be constantly paying attention and fighting back. Otherwise, we, we end up, you know, like those countries. Yeah. Well, ideological subversion is a huge part of communist tactics uh chinese communist party does it all the time they learn from the soviet union and enhance things 
there's hardly a U.S. official who hasn't at some point been offered a trip to China or money, Chinese money gets into all kinds of places. Mm. And, and that's just, we're talking about the Chinese Communist Party. The reality is that there are many different factions to this broad concept of communism. It's really a postmodern thing because it, it kind of defies being pinned down to a definition. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, you, 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 I've spoken to people who are declared communists who are like, oh, I, I hate what's happening in China. That's awful. They don't see the connections between themselves. I do think there's some kind of blindness in the U.S. about ideology on the left where there's this kind of idea that, like, there's no such thing as left authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. Where, like, we just pretend not to see it, or, like, the official media or whatever pretend that there's no such thing as left authoritarianism. You know, yep. it's, it's like, a weird thing, and it, it bleeds into, like, it happened with Antifa, where people were like, oh, it's, it's not, it's, it's an just idea. an idea, not an organization. But then it also bleeds into, like, the China stuff, where you have people who are just like, well, no, China's not authoritarian, the, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well also, importantly, like, you had the Trump administration, particularly Pompeo, bringing up ideology. This is an ideological struggle with China. That is something that the Biden administration is incapable of discussing. It can, it can be competing powers, but the ideology, which is critical to this, is completely off the table. I think one of the uh, most clever things pulled off by the communist or Marxist or authoritarian left is that they call themselves libertarian left. And we see this expressed in memes. So there's the political compass memes, which I'm sure you, you've seen the political the compass. quadrant thing. Yeah. Are you familiar with the political compass? Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a square and there's four quadrants. Mm -hmm. And then you have the top left, which is authoritarian, the top right, which is authoritarian. And the bottom, you know, you have left and right that are libertarian. Mm -hmm. So the libertarian right's easily definable. They're free market capitalists. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, you can sell whatever you want to whoever you want as long as you agree to it. Buyer beware. <laughs> uh, caveat emptor. I think it's a, that's how you say it. And then you have the authoritarian right, which tends to be ideologically driven, command economies, ultra traditionalist. And then you have the authoritarian left, which is the tankies, the you know, Soviet Union, etc. But whenever you look at the memes about the libertarian left, it's Antifa and it's wokeness to authoritarian ideologies. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these people, I think they do it on purpose. It's very clever. You tell someone that if you want to be the freedom-loving libertarian leftist, the good guys, you have to beat people, you have to th start fires, and believe in our, you know, our, our cult ideology. In reality, if you look at the core of a libertarian system with cooperative economics, it is small tribes, it is small farms working together, it is, it, that's it. You don't force anyone to do anything, you don't beat them into submission, you don't demand they adhere to an ideology. But if, if, our, if our jokes, if our whole perspective in society is that freedom-loving leftists are the people burning down buildings and, to, and, and canceling people and threatening them and destroying their lives, there literally is no libertarian left in the United States. So then what's the opposition? What, you know, what, what, what opposes the authoritarians? Not the right, the right of the bad guys. Well, that leaves you with only the right because there is no opposition from the left. They have abandoned their principles. They are trying to fit in. They're trying to look good. Wokeness is nothing if not the appearance of looking compassionate and friendly. Mm -hmm. It's nothing if not the appearance of saying, oh, we'll save you. We'll bring in all these immigrants and do all this stuff. It sounds great. Mm -hmm. So there's no pushback on it. And there absolutely should be. It's it, put us in this position. Yeah, it's, it's the tricky thing about Marxism or communism, whatever you want to call this ideology, is that it really takes advantage of the fact that I think most people are good people. Yeah. They yeah. want to help people. Mm -hmm. They would like to see the world be a more equal, right. better place. Yeah. But Marx presented this extremely simplistic view of all of human society. There are only the oppressors and the oppressed. Yeah. Anything you do as an individual doesn't matter. You are either in the oppressed or the oppressors. To create a better world, obviously, you need to get rid of the oppressors. They're not going to want to be kicked out. Therefore, you have to kick them out. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. 
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.